At a distance of 2.5 million light years or about 800 kiloparsecs, some parts of the Andromeda galaxy would have rotated only 0.0007 degrees in the past 400 years since modern astronomy has been around. This change at that distance would be too small to detect rotational changes by direct observation alone. We are definitely missing something here. Something is off. That something is the color. And not that the color of the galaxy is wrong or anything, but it's the key. I'm talking about colors of the visible spectrum. Some people call it the colors of the rainbow, others call it prism colors. Not to be confused with prism color. That's a single color. A star like our sun emits light that we usually consider to be white, not counting sunrise or sunset. When we shine white light through a prism, it spreads into the various colors, starting at red and ending at violet. Now, here's the interesting thing. Depending on the source of the white light, you may notice dark lines on top of some colors. Don't worry, it's not chicken grease or dirt on your prism causing this. Those lines are absorption lines, or, if you want to give credit to the German dude that discovered them, then they're called Fraunhofer lines. Okay, so if our prison is squeaky clean, then what's up with these lines? Some light sources, even though they look white, do not emit all of the colors between red and violet. They're missing a few colors. Without going too much into the detail, these missing colors are colors that are absorbed by material within the light source itself. Since these colors are relatively small compared to the total amount of colors generated, it will still appear white to the naked eye. Okay, back to the Fraunhofer lines. So, we know that light from most light sources have these lines. The cool thing about these lines is that the amount, width, and location of all these lines on the spectrum depends on the type of light source. Based on these patterns, we can figure out the type of light source it's coming from. More specifically, we can determine the chemical elements that are emitting the light. Cool. Now, an interesting thing happens when a light source that's moving relative to a detector is detected through a prism. We'll still see the colors and the Fraunhofer patterns, but the patterns will be shifted towards the violet or red. The amount it's shifted will depend on how fast the light is moving towards or away from us, respectively. This is called redshift. It's similar to the way the sound of a car horn changes as the car drives past you. So since everything in the universe is moving relative to something else, we can look at light coming from stars in the Andromeda galaxy and determine if it's moving towards or away from us by detecting shifts in the Fraunhofer lines. We're almost there. Now, if we start from the center of the Andromeda galaxy and start measuring the redshift as we move towards the edge of the galaxy, we end up with what's known as a rotation curve. We then do the same thing from the center but move to the opposite edge. We then take the absolute average of the two rotation curves. Now what we have is the average rates at which parts of the galaxy are moving towards or away from us. If we know how wide the Andromeda galaxy is, which we do, then we can figure out how long it takes for parts of the galaxy to go around once. We can then take the average to determine how long it takes, on average, for the galaxy to go around once. This may not be as useful though, since galaxies, and solar systems for that matter, don't rotate as one solid piece. Now it all makes sense. Using redshift, we measure how fast parts of the galaxy are moving towards and away from us. We then develop a rotation curve, then figure out the rotation period using a simple rotation formula. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Slap on that notification bell for more demystification of the strange and weird. I'm Dex DFX.